and seeing how stuff gets made, so are we. Which is why today, the journal's kicking off Made in Haverhill, where we go behind the scenes exploring some of the city's most fascinating manufacturing operations. On this first episode, we're visiting prestigious piano manufacturer Mason & Hamlin Piano Company. At their Duncan Street location, craftsmen blend old-fashioned artisanship with modern technology to create what's been called the finest piano in the world. Welcome to Mason & Hamlin. I am Bruce Clark, lead design engineer, and I will show you around the factory today. Mason and Hamlin pianos are widely regarded as among the world's finest. The pianos have a wonderful lush voice and an excellence of construction that make them very desirable. Most of our pianos go to professional musicians to whom a fine instrument is a capital investment rather than a consumer item. Mason and Hamlin was founded in Boston in 1854 by Henry Mason and Emmons Hamlin. In 1932, during the Great Depression, Mason and Hamlin, Chickering and Kanabi three of the best in American piano history, consolidated manufacturing into the Aeolian American plant in East Rochester, New York. In 1989, the Falcone Company moved Mason and Hamlin into our current location at 35 Duncan Street in Haverhill. The plant has approximately 90,000 square feet of manufacturing space spread over six floors plus a basement. Building a piano starts with the rim. Pressing a rim is much like laying the keel in a sailboat. Thus, we begin our tour in the rim room. This is the pressing room, or the rim room. And here, basically, we press things to shapes. The rim presses are all curved presses that make the shape that you know as a grand piano. Now, a rim is made up by many small, thin layers that are bent around to form with glue. And once the glue sets, that's how you hold the shape. And again, the rims are all made out of maple, which is absolutely superb material for making rims. This is an inner rim press for a concert grand piano. This is for a nine foot four piano, which incidentally we designed and brought into being here. And so you can see it's got the shape of the piano there. What you do is you put glue on the laminations, you bend them around the form, clamp them. When the glue is dry, you have a rim. This is a stack of laminations for a rim we're getting ready to press. Okay, so you can see there's two layers of plastic laminate and then the layers of maple, the maple wood, which will go into making the rim. Now what they're going to do is they're going to run it through the glue spreader. They're going to apply glue to, the, to both sides of everything except the two outside layers. And then they're going to bend it around one of the rim presses and clamp it into place. And so as you can see now with the rollers, it will just pull the layers right through you notice there's a brass call sheet there that distributes the pressure from the calls uh, on the thinner outer rim. But you see now there's glue on both sides. They will then run the individual maple layers through. And again, this is a process that goes back as long as people have been making bent rims. Once the glue's on it, they have to move. Yeah. They, we have about right. 20 minutes to get it under clamp pressure. Right. Typically, we do it in under 10. Each one of those clamp screws is capable uh, of about 48,000 pounds. But you need to have 150 pounds per square inch on any of these glues, otherwise you have a weak glue joint. You need that kind of pressure. Right. Where do we go now? We go in the, the, the next, next level? Next floor up. Here we've assembled what we would call a skeleton. This, you might say, is the inner structure of a grand piano. It's been CNC machined also, and so it's all fit together now. And so as you see, this is a very sturdy structure. This is a maple rim. This is as sturdy as sturdy gets, right? Um, this is poplar posts. This piece right here is a belly rail. And so this big structural piece here. And it's upside down at the moment, Okay. right? And so uh, the soundboard is mounted on the other side. The strings would be farther this way. But here now we've assembled everything and we're basically ready to rock and roll. So this is the rough mill where we take wood when it comes in 
We uh, basically get it put together into pieces that are the appropriate size for whatever we're making on the CNC router over there. You can see basically the wood, it'll get cut into widths on the straight line rip. It'll get sanded to thickness on an abrasive planer. It'll be glued together into panels or blocks. And so everything on this side of the, of the first floor is setting up to go over there to be machined to whatever it needs to be machined to. Okay, let's go up to the second floor. Now on this floor we do traditional piano making. This is a fixture to assemble the skeleton, which is the core structural element in the piano. Um, so you have stops and, and clamps and what have you, but at the end of the day you assemble a skeleton and people from a hundred years ago would understand this fixture perfectly. Like you said before, it's basically a 19th century process. It is. You know? Fundamentally, grand pianos or pianos of any kind are a 19th century product and many of the things in the factory today are entirely understandable by people who made them a hundred years ago. This is a tension resonator. It is a feature that Mason and Hamlin brought into existence. It adds a steel truss rod system to this incredibly strong structure we already have. It pretty much guarantees that the, that the rim holds its shape. And so you can see the posts, you can see the belly rail, you can see the rim. So well, let's look at the case making now. Here what we're doing is assembling the case. This is the outer rim. This is the skeleton or part of the skeleton here. The plate's already been set to this and then taken off. We just don't want to handle the weight of the, of the cast iron plate through the rest of the process. They will mate back together after the finish is on it and then it'll get strung. So let's just go up to the soundboard room. Soundboards are thin pieces of spruce. They're, in our case, about 11, 30 seconds thick. Now here is a soundboard that has ribs attached. There's a bridge on the other side. The soundboard makes the sound pressure waves that you actually hear. This is equipment for gluing bridges on. All this is, is these are air cylinders on magnets that I can put absolutely anywhere. Every piano has a cast iron plate. Pianos have between 40 and 50,000 pounds of tension strung across that plate, so you need something with the strength of, a, of cast iron to be able to hold it. This is what the plate looks like after we've done all of the finishing work on it. It's all smooth, it's all been filled. When you're making a beautiful instrument, the expectation is it's beautiful in just about every possible way. Now over here, what we're doing is setting a plate. This is one of the most skilled jobs in the factory. When people say hand craftsmanship, this is the one that leaps to mind. You need to notch the bridge like that because where the bridge pins are needs to be a termination for the wire vibrating and so those need to be exactly in the center of the holes for the bridge pins. If it isn't, you get funny sounds out of a piano. He makes it look easy, it's not. It's amazing watching the work that goes into creating such an outstanding instrument. Mason and Hamlin welcomes individuals and groups for factory tours. For more information, call 978-374-8888 or visit masonhamlin.com.